many bad beliefs about businesses in Nigeria? Do you know that there are 26 new businesses that allows you to have other side business or other office work? And do you know that these same 26 businesses cost little logistics with no upfront at all? You welcome to today's episode of Amazing Amazon. Today we'll be having a chit chat with a business consultant and business owner. Welcome to Amazing Amazon. <music> It's amazing Amazon period time. Come close, don't go far. Hello and welcome. This is another episode of Amazing Amazon. This is the program for you. This is the program for you and I. This is the program for the young, the old, the female and the male folks. Well, on this program, we center basically on female guests, not because we are trying to be gender biased, but because we are trying to focus on the, gen on the females in different sectors of the country. And last week, we had a chit chat with a female child advocate, a female lawyer and a child advocate. And it was a an interesting one but today i've come with another uh well established guest um today we are delighted to have with us a special guest who is a successful ceo in the bedding industry she's an accomplished uh, business coach with over 80 years experience in the field she has grew a company with 10,000 naira without brand influences without loans from bank without all the necessary things we feel is needed in the business entrepreneur in the business industry she watched a business grow from um just as good as you're giving birth to a child and watching the child grow from zero years to where it is at the moment she's everything you want to ask for apart from she being an entrepreneur she's also a business coach and also she's a fitness enthusiast yes i saw it on her page let's walk um, uh permit me to what are your name as welcome uche clementina onye kwelu the ceo of Stotch beddings thank you hello thank you. thank you very much for having us thank you how do you feel this morning i feel great i feel good mm. i'm happy to be here i must commend your outfit is nice your look the color the blue <laughs> with the red is looking awesome beautiful thank you so how uh we want to talk about your business how you grow your business from the scratch to where it is at the moment. I have done a, a detective type of scrutiny on your pages, both on your LinkedIn and on your Instagram page. And I have a whole lot of questions to ask. <laughs> now I want to start with what motivated you to start bedding business? Okay. What did you think of before starting? Oh, it's better now. Why no air? Why no makeup? Why no air do? No. Mm. <laughs> I actually wanted a business that is not gender biased. Okay. My role model in business is Dangote. I like on Dangote. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so I wanted, I, I studied his business pattern. He's not into any business that has to do with a particular gender, gender mm -hmm. a particular tribe, yeah. or even a particular religion. Yeah. So I... At first, I didn't know it was going to be bullshit, but I just knew that the business I wanted to do yeah. was going to be a business that is a product that is being used that in everyone. yes in every home. Yeah. So luckily for me, I was working as a sales girl in a shop. So I realized that bullshit was one of the products people were always buying whenever I market it to them. Yeah. They don't come with it on their shopping list, oh, okay. but immediately I market it to them. They mm. then realized that this thing is a need that some people don't even know they yeah. need it. So I now decided to take up on that business and market it rigorously. So are you saying the first business you ever started is this business business? No. Oh. Okay, no. how many businesses have you done? I've done um, two. Okay. I was um, a makeup artist, mm. doing bridal makeup and all of that. Then um, from there, I now moved to jewelry business. Okay. In those days when we had this um, wire work, yeah, like you'd yeah. craft yourself mm -hmm. bead making mm -hmm. and all of that. I can see some, <laughs> some, some touches of the wire yes. work and the makeup. You yes. still do the two? No, I don't. Or oh, you still have an um, idea of the two? Yes, I don't do them again. I'm fully focused on the version business. Mm, now. You have a lot. You're about to start opening secrets for us. <laughs> we are not paying for your, for your business course classes now. <laughs> well, you started your business in 2015. That was when you were a core member. Yes. You were serving. You yes. were earning 18K then. Was it 18? 19, the 8. 198, I mean. Yes. You were earning 198 then. You were either collecting money from home or for whatever person was sponsoring you. Yes. At what stage did you realize, oh, with my 198, when I save it or when I risk saving for a whole month, I can start burdens? And who were your first customers? Okay, so first thing, I didn't even know I was going to start the bedsheet business during my NYSC day. Okay. But I knew that going for NYSC, 
number one, I didn't want to come back home after that mm, one year. I can't relate. Because I did not want a station about I'll come back and my mom is asking me mm -hmm. and go and look for a job. My go parents start uh, a teaching job. Yes, I was born in Ilori and um, the town is a very small town mm. that job opportunities are limited then. So immediately I was serving in Akwaibo. I just, I was just, like I said, my ears was on the ground oh. looking for anything I can possibly do to mm. ensure that I stabilize my finances, yeah. that after the NYSA, I don't have to go back, go back to home. Or... Yeah. Mm. So luckily for me, I stumbled on somebody who wanted a hard bed sheet. Yeah. He imported bed sheets and was looking for someone to sell Help. and i checked my bank account the only thing i could scrape out of it was, was ten thousand mm. so i gave him the ten thousand i took the best sheet and started marketing it to my neighbors at home yeah i stayed in a 24 room self-contained yeah. i was only copper in that compound oh. so others were all working class i just had to go door to door but mom the new you copper on the block Are please you serious? <laughs> i have best sheet to sell and they all bought from me yeah and that was how the business started mm. Didn't you at any point feel like this is not the business for me? Hmm. Maybe there was a backlash, maybe there was financial instability, maybe there was something close to bankruptcy at some point. I felt like, oh, this is not the business for me. Luckily for me, I've never gotten to that. So it was a smooth <laughs> ride right from the beginning to this very not moment. Not a smooth ride, but I was always seeing progress oh, at every point in time. Even yeah. like I remember when I came online. A lot of people were not trusting me. Then I was always advertising on Linda Ikeji's blog on the comment section. Yeah. So people send me a message, do you have a, a work-in store? I do not have one. So how do we trust you? I'm going to have to start sending them my NYSC ID card, everything imagine. they needed to know. My Facebook page that I can't run away with your money. I'll definitely yeah. deliver. deliver. So then I was just having um, financial constraints, having enough money to even sustain, buy goods and to sustain the customer. So I, luckily for me, I was born into a business family. Okay. My dad is a business person. My mom too is into business. So I know, I understand all these challenges that they come, but they don't come to stay mm. and they don't kill the business mm. the most difficult thing anybody can um, have in business is not having customers so i never had that um, challenge of not having customers, customers. i yeah. was always looking for new ways i can uh, market the product so where did the name starch beddings come from <clears throat> and how did you come to the realization that yellow is your color because i can <laughs> see all over is it that yellow or nothing <laughs> Yes, yeah, so the name Stutch Beddings, I wanted to register my business And that's CAC? Yes. Okay. I remember being in a room with my friends, so yeah. I wanted to register my business with them, see, so that the I could open a corporate um, business as well, because people yeah. were not trusting me with my personal um, bank account. So people were, so my friends were suggesting, ah, use Uche Beddings. I didn't want any name that was, immediately you hear the business name, you know, ah, this one is mm. Igbo Girl. Yeah. Immediately you hear this. So I wanted something unique. Though in a way, I always have these big dreams of having um, a very big brand, just like Dangote. You have Dangote cement, you have Dangote this, mm -hmm. you have different products, sugar and all of that. So I needed that name that I can just map out and now be using it for different, different brands. brands yeah. So being a Catholic, someone um, suggested St. Uche. When I wrote it down, and I now abbreviated it, mm. S-T-U-C-H-E. So I just removed the E, e and, and came up with the name Stutch. When I pronounced it, even it me, gave, mm -hmm. I know this name is yeah. giving what it should be giving. And that was how the name the came thing about. Started. Yes. Wow, beautiful. Saint Uche, Stutch yes. Beddings. Yes. Stutch Beddings is over eight years now. Yes. And it has been really great. I, I can attest to it. I'm very sure your customers are watching right now can yes. attest to you. What has been that thing that I've always led you on, that I've always been pushing you, and that's always been, okay, for me, my mantra is, oh, don't give up. Yes. Don't give up, you can do better. So each day I feel like I'm not doing enough. I say to myself, oh, don't give up. What's that thing you say to yourself? And the one obvious of this business made you start doing. Do you read? Do you watch um, um, podcasts? Yes, you can also watch podcasts. Yeah. Do you listen to some business tycoons? Do you have a role model apart from Dan Gote? <laughs> yeah, apart from Dan Gote. Do you have some other business uh, role models? Yeah, so for me, basically, I believe there is nothing you want to do. No, There is no business you want to do that you cannot make a living 
out of it. Yeah. So immediately I started off this business. I even had them, um, you know, people try to discourage me. Yeah. That no, ah, why would you want to do bedsheet? Why bed not do fashion? Mm. Who, who does them? Um, who does bed who bed buys bedsheets? Mm -hmm. So for me, I knew that that business was something I would make money from. Yeah. I don't even need somebody who was in it to, to show me, oh, you. this business, there is money in it. I just need that there is a way I would package it, yeah. ensure that I have good customer yeah. service, ensure that I give the right products and I market well. How did I'm you gain your trust? Well. I really want to know that. How did you gain your trust online before you had a walk-in store? Yes. So basically, it was um, from posting my personal activities. Then I was just um, in my one room self-contained in bomb. So even when I'm cooking, I'm on Instagram live, mm. I'm on Facebook, I'm posting video of me cooking, me going to go and um, do way bills. I was posting a lot of behind yeah. the scene activities. So when people saw that, ah, this person is really serious. And then we didn't have a lot of people marketing that way, showing behind the scene, showing where they're entering boss to go and um, do way bill and doing mm. all of it, even when I'm laying the best shit. So you're saying get ready with me as always started with uh -huh. you. Mm, I understand. <laughs> it's run this business run this with business me. With me. <laughs> okay, so going by your LinkedIn page, it also states that you're a business consultant and I've seen lots of reviews where you've, you've consulted for people and they're making millions just yes. like you are. At what point did you feel like, apart from running my bedding business, at what point did you consider going to consultancy? And then do you have a certificate to prove that, oh, you're not a business consultant, but certified business consultant? Yes. So let me say it started off by me wanting to help others. Probably as Pro a bono first... cases. Yes. Yeah, so <laughs> mm. I think probably as the first oh. child, we'll have this... Um, intuition of wanting Helping. to help anybody with so yeah. i would see myself entering um, dms of people who are doing businesses and i'm telling ah, this thing you posted like this it soon to bring you customers yeah. why not tweak it this way i tried this it worked then i even had to even assemble five of my friends then in a group on um, instagram yeah. i was sharing tips to them i tried this and it worked why not try it i just um wanted everybody to also grow anything yeah. i know i'm good in sharing then even in school right from when i was in school i was always doing tutorials for the junior classes mm. then so i think that was where the whole thing started off so it was only a friend of mine gifted clothing that told me i oh, know you can do coaching why not start teaching people what they can also do why not open a page for it mm. at first i was um discouraged i felt like i didn't go to one um um, school yeah. have had mm -hmm. to go and learn about um, business I'm not sure I'm qualified for that only for me to now see some people who don't even understand the business negritties teaching rubbish telling people to do things that I know that these things don't work these things have never worked I'm running this business practically you know. I know what works mm. so from there I just opened up my coaching page I started sharing business tips and feedbacks started rolling in from yeah, there beautiful. then after that i now decided to okay start hosting paid classes as well mm -hmm. i saw the way lives of business owners people who came on instagram they were clueless yeah. on what to do there i was mm -hmm. seeing their feedbacks on how they were able to grow their business from the knowledge i shared so today i i do not have any school like one business school certificate my so own certificate experience <laughs> experience yeah. experience i've gathered a lot of experience in running this business even managing it managing the finances because if you are not very prudent in managing your finances you can also not run a business yeah. so it doesn't end in marketing then mm -hmm. even managing the staff yeah as well so all these experiences are what i teach other business people and they learn so much from that mm. What did you study in school and is this speaking for how you're running your business at the moment? Is there any relationship with, oh, okay, I studied English, but now I work at a media firm. Oh, now I work at the airport. Oh, I studied chemistry. Now I work at an oil and gas industry. Is there any relationship between what you studied and what you're doing? Um, absolutely no. <laughs> oh, okay. okay. I studied estate management in school. Okay, yes, so yeah, by, by profession, you're supposed to be a realtor. Yes, I'm supposed to be a realtor, but interestingly, I still do it by the side. Oh, kind of, yes, not mm. professionally, but I still do it by, by the, the side. side. When I see properties that people are interested in, I link them up and um, we'll get the job done there. Mm. This, your business is, like you said, it is not a business that not too many people will open eyes to, and your pet said, number one bedding company did you just put it there 
for for profile sake or you really meant what you said I meant and is a verifiable okay, claim. Okay, tested and trusted. <laughs> tested and trusted is the number one. Number one when it comes to, there is nobody in Nigeria, even in Africa. Let's go beyond Nigeria. How did you make your research? <laughs> I researched. Okay. I researched very well. I've traveled. Mm -hmm. I've traveled to different countries, even right. African countries and i've also researched to say okay who is doing something similar to what i'm doing but nobody is doing it at the scale at which i'm doing it right now mm. so have you ever considered moving this business or you have business this particular business in different states and different countries or it's just in lagos on the mainland basically for now it's just still um in lagos we're mm. still looking at it's part of our big goals oh. to have warehouses <laughs> mm -hmm. have warehouses have branches in different states and in different countries as well hmm. madam uche when you started this business you had short-term goals and you had long-term goals your short-term goal then have you achieved them and your long-term goals then are you on the way achieving them or you've achieved them and you've now set another longer short-term goals i've achieved all my short term Ooh. goals. <laughs> Ooh. all 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 my short term goals some of them i even achieved them faster than, than i you. thought yes i yeah. was going to achieve them then for the long-term goals we're still getting there but trust me every day whenever i check um like um, will I call it my financials or our record? I'm saying that okay, we're still on track. Yesterday is never we're better than yeah, today. Yes, so we're still mm. on track. We're still on track on um, meeting that long term goal that we have for this business. Mm. Now let's talk a little bit about Nigeria, the females to be precise. The females, according to the tribe where you came from, they are believed to belong to the kitchen. They are believed to be betrothed to someone, one chief or one mazi, and then they grow their life from there. Did your parents have that same perspective and how were you able to break through or they never had a perspective and how did you being someone from the East affect or help your business? Yes, I think that um, um, what I call that um, belief system has changed. has changed a very long time ago, probably in the 60s or in the 70s. No, I'm not sure. I'm not <laughs> sure. 60s, sure? 60s, 60s is like so far. <laughs> Let me just say, okay, 2005, 2007, I would agree. Mm, okay, still maybe, works. maybe, but probably because I didn't grow up in the East. Yeah. My parents, I was born in Elorin. I speak Yoruba fluently. Ooh. Yeah, so we, my parents didn't have that kind of a mindset. Okay. My mom also had that mindset. Even my dad, the woman should have her own source of income. So yeah. when I started off my business, though the only challenge they had was that I didn't even work because yeah. I don't really have a working experience. So immediately from the NYSC, I was starting up the business. They were concerned about me going to school. Yeah. And after school, I'm just going into business. business. But immediately they saw I was serious with what I was doing and my results were speaking for me. Everybody gave me their full support. Hmm. The conversation is about to get a little bit interesting, but we have to go on a short break right now to gap uh, sorry, to go in some, some glass of juice and water and then we'll be back there after. Thank you. Glad to have you back. You're also on to the program Amazing Amazon. This is the program where we get to motivate everybody and we get to inspire everybody and when we get to bring in female guests to show the world that apart from the male folks, the female folks are also doing excellently well in different sectors of the economy. Just before we went on that break, we'll be having an interesting and educative chit chat with a business owner and consultant. So, so I will be talking about the beddies industry as a whole. Now, uh, you're welcome back. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much for still keeping locked with us. Thank you. And I'll be on to, I'd like to ask you a question, uh, which is, what is the unique feature or what are the unique features of your bedding's products that are set you apart from your other competitors? What have kept you afloat? Number one is quality. Quality. We do not compromise on quality. Regardless comes, of the price. Yes, when it comes to starch beddings. I think um, this year alone, we've done our price increase twice mm. because of how the whole economy and the exchange rate thing That's was um, fluctuating. Mm. Yes, yeah, so quality is number one. Yeah. Number two is our good customer service experience that we'll give to our customers. Why not shed light on that? <laughs> do you yes. give, share, give, if I enter your DM, oh, I want to buy four by six. 
What would you tell me? <laughs> what would make me in no, interested? No, first we are going to understand your needs. What's your bed size? What are the Four kind of six. colors that you would um, prefer? Let's do black or gray. Good. Okay. <laughs> so we'll now also look at them. Um, we'll give you different varieties of design. Like currently we have over 200 designs that our customers Beautiful. can choose from. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we'll have over 500. So our customers get so you to see. You send the 200 to my dear. We have our website. So oh, okay. we'll just send you a link to that particular oh, size okay. that you want. So you go to our website. You can screenshot from there. You can even shop from there if mm -hmm. you would, um, prefer that. Then we we'll also give our customers very fast delivery. Immediately mm. a fast response on our social media platform. Oh. As they're placing your order, we have somebody on ground who is in charge of wrapping it. We have dispatch riders that ensure that we deliver immediately. Then mm. even for outside Lagos, that they were sending it off to the location. Mm. We don't have to wait for a very long time for us to pre-order and now come and um, deliver them to you. Mm. So that's a loan. And when our customers get they are what i ordered yes, is what versus i got what? Mm. <laughs> we've never had a case of what i ordered versus what i got because we also what think i ordered is, is what, what i got, got. some mm. of them even got more than the other mm. because Beautiful. they'll be expecting that ah, this design would then um, probably not look as bright as it is looking yeah. real life because mm -hmm. we take our pictures ourselves we don't use any form of Future. foreign pictures or bodo yibo. Oh, <laughs> i think i understand you are trying pictures. to break some tables but yes yes okay now did the price of the fuel affect your logistics? Or uh, what are the major challenges you're facing with customers? Uh, like I interviewed a, a CEO, she sells clothing and all of that. And she talked about how customers are stressed now when it comes to logistics because she uses drivers. She uses, um, she doesn't use all these professional logistics firm. I don't want to mention the name of any yes. person now. So she has issues with drivers dropping off. She has issues with clients picking up their calls when dispatch riders outside because you know at times you end up paying twice delivery fee because i was there you didn't pick up or maybe you delayed or something so how have you been handling all the challenges you've been facing and what are the challenges you've been facing recently now we have to increase our delivery prices mm. in fact the third party who is handling our delivery um delivery our logistics had to increase prices and we communicated that to our customers. Customer. So we, ensure, we noticed that customers who could have bought maybe five bed sheets because of the increase in the delivery cost, you see them trying to stick to their budget. Now they are reducing the quantity mm. of the bed sheets that they are buying from us. It's I affecting imagine. sales, it's affecting everything. Customers yeah. are not happy, yeah. but we can't give up. We are hoping that everything will um, get, get better. better and the business will continue to try. Any other challenge apart from logistics? Mm, another thing is the um, exchange rates. Our products are being imported. We don't uh, manufacture them here in Nigeria. Yeah. So this frequent um, fluctuation in exchange it rates affects. is affecting us. Then we also have an issue with the APAPA where there's always conjections of oh, containers. Yeah. So you see um, the container that you would ship from China, it will get here in three weeks. But to bring it out of that port, is now a huge challenge and you know this also ties down your capital yeah a product that is supposed to you're supposed to be selling it that money is mm -hmm. supposed to be back in the business is still tied down somewhere so that is also part of the challenges we are currently facing, facing. Now. Mm. i want to talk about how you you maintain quality control of all your products is there any special way because you said you're shipping them in how are you overseeing that okay they deliver quantity uh, quality always I have an agreement with um, the manufacturers in China, so we already signed an okay, agreement so that whoever... if we should ship in something that mm. is below the quantity or the quality I ordered for, yeah. or the, the standard I gave you, we'll send back that container back to China. So mm. because of that fear of they know they've signed, they've agreed to that, they've been sticking to the, um, the quality I gave them. What and what do starch beddings produce? Mm, currently now we have our pillow line, standard pillow, yeah. very good um, quality soft sleeping pillow that helps relieve um, neck pain yeah. and um, back pain. Then we also have um, bed sheets, we have um, our pyjamas um, brand, Stutch yeah. pyjamas where we deal in cartoon character pyjamas and during Christmas period mm. we are the number one when it comes to those family Christmas yeah. matching um, pyjamas. We also sell to wells as well we sell two worlds we sell scented candles and um bathrobes oh wow then yes. you sell bedspread yes yeah. bedsheets and duvets 
this is um i was listening to the news recently and farmers complained that they are scared things will increase by 150 percent which means a food produced as worth a thousand naira now would be as expensive as two thousand five hundred naira as this affected your business already or it will later it will definitely affect our business that's not and how do you intend to control that there's no control over it. You just have to, you have, no you just have to deal with it. Mm. We just have to deal with it. Market more. If it's before, probably our marketing budget was maybe um, five percent of our profits. For us to reach more customers that will be able to afford this product at the price at which we are going to be selling, that means we we'll have to also increase our marketing budget to probably ten percent to mm. be able to still stay afloat. And thrive in the business. What advice do you have to any female out there that's planning to to uh, go into any business before we even venture into your any business? This program is meant to motivate, is meant to inspire. What word of advice, what, what inspirational quote would you like to drop to anybody watching us right now? First is you have to be patient. Patient. I've realized that um, I don't know if it's the Gen Z mm. <laughs> or business owners who are coming up now they do not have that patience. They want to start up a business and immediately that business has grown. Mm. If you're patient, if you're hardworking, if you're prudent in your yeah. spending, and I don't um, underestimate the power of prayer and mm. hard work. So you have to ensure that as you're working hard, you're also committing that business into the hands of oh God. God. That God, though, I have done my part. Yeah. Please bless, bless the work of my mm. hands. And trust me, that person would driving any business they find do you themselves. agree with the skit makers we see online that they produce three four skits and the next thing they're buying a mansion on the island do you agree with that type of business strategy is there a way in which they are maneuvering it or there's something they are not saying to us no i think um is we understanding how that niche works okay when they produce the skits people a lot of nigerians are i don't know if i'll call us a consuming nation we spend a lot of time watching online. online watching things that would not even benefit us yeah. we just want to pass time so because of that high traffic they get on their pages a lot of people pay them in millions for adverts yeah. brands sponsor them they make money from different ways they yeah. are the sign brand ambassadorship um deals so i think for that niche is um is easy for them to you know produce false kits and next thing they have them um, money mm. to buy different things for themselves yeah like you said the other time, you said Gen Z's are not always patient. Apart from Gen Z's, the millennial too. What advice do you have to the millennials? Since you've advised Gen Z to be patient, <laughs> now let's speak to the millennials. What advice do you have to them as regards business strategies? Yes, I would um, advise them to be very good at what, whatever it is they do. Mm -hmm. And they should always work hard to improve in their craft. Yeah. If you look at my bedsheets packaging when I started, it's not the same thing with what I'm doing now. Mm -hmm. And it will not be the same And thing it will not be the same thing in the next five yeah. years. If you look at even the sewing, that's part of the thing when my customers open my bed sheets, the, how neat it looks like. Currently in Nigeria, there's nobody that sells bed sheets that irons their bed sheets. Yeah. I'm the only one that does that. I oh. ensure that I give my customers that excellent finishing. Beautiful. So I think I would um, advise them, Lena, make sure that you you make the best of everything that yeah. you do. Don't under don't um, underplay your business and feel I can just do it anyhow. You have yeah. to ensure that you put in a touch of excellence in yeah. everything that you do in your business what advice do you have to upcoming ceos that want to venture in your line of business first i would um let them know that marketing is the blood when i mean blood carry your business on your and head. the lifeline yeah. of that business remember i mentioned that when i was um working as a sales girl yeah there was one key thing i picked which is still helping me to now was that people don't add best shit to their shopping lists when they are going to the supermarket or when they are going somewhere to buy bed they don't when they are going to the market they don't just add it mm, to their list yeah. but, so it means that you as a bed seller you have to be ready to market market anyway if you go to my page you see or sometimes we do a lot of um, funny videos as well yeah. because we realize that people enjoy watching just things like things, that yeah. so i ensure that I, I i bring in all this um content that will help keep them engaged yeah. and also make us top of mind so that whenever anybody around them or whenever they need arise, 
Stutch Bedding will be the first thing. brand. First, they have to take marketing very seriously. Yeah. You can't joke with marketing. Mm -hmm. People in other type of businesses can decide not to market so well yeah. because they're probably fashion or hair that people will definitely buy or mm -hmm. food that people will definitely eat. But when it comes to bedsheet, someone can use on bedsheet for the next three years. Yeah. So it's not like we have a fast return rate yeah. for our customers which means that you have to be getting new customers every day and the only way you can do that is through marketing if you check our instagram page you see the way we content inter yes we content we're always posting content but the funny ones something showing behind the scene something showing our working showroom yeah. where you can come in to come and buy even something talking about the quality yeah. so that immediately anybody wants to buy best shit even if it's your colleague or somebody yeah. around you the first brand that will be top of mind and you would refer people to mm, will be such better well this is the point where you get to give your social media handles both yes. your business page your consultancy page to people out there we're on instagram as touch beddings okay. and we also have our coaching page as touch boss then we also have a pajamas page where we do children pajamas even christmas pajamas yeah. as touch pajamas this is where we have to appreciate you for having us thank, thank you very you. much for thank enlightening you. us for educating us and putting business owners and also educating the female folks out there that they can do it be yes. patient put your business on your head advertise it market as more as you can and then you're just a step away from success we have to kind of wrap up the interview now to complete the rest of the program later please stay with us That's it on today's episode of Amazing Amazon. I hope you learned one or two things about business. If you don't, you should watch it on YouTube. And this is where we draw the curtain on today's episode. See you next week. Don't forget to keep trying your best. Bye for now.